What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Decoders around the world, wherever you may be, both male and female, my name is Logan, your tour guide, and this is Decode Your Reality, and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the beast. (laughs) So be the beast decoded ladies and gentlemen this this one just would not let me stop creating slides i have literally been sitting here for the past three hours on top of the presentation i already thought i was completely done on but nope started to want me to in more insert more slides and as i'm going through this just a few hours ago the song that i had playing which is Um, by Sabaton, but it was originally done by Twisted Sister. I've already broken down Twisted Sister, showing that these guys didn't have a choice coming together as a band, a band that I listened to growing up, of course, because I grew up in the 80s. Amazing album. This album called Stay Hungry, and the song is called The Beast. It's off track number eight, three minutes and 30 seconds long. (laughs) And this was the song that popped into my head obviously because I was decoding this and what you're looking at here ladies and gentlemen it's the wolf feed the wolf if you're a fan of the medicine deck the wolf is the 15th card 15th card is the devil it's the beast and you're looking at the zodiac wheel here that's right how is it tied to being the beast it's the beast above your head and seemingly what runs the layers of mankind. What runs the layers of mankind. So very first and foremost, big shout out to all you Patreons. Thank you for supporting this research. I really do appreciate each and every one of you for your pledges every single month. It helps keep continue to create this material. So thank you so very much. Sending you guys a ton of love. So really it starts off with... Um, this right here. I, I wanted to bring in theology, like I, I love doing, you know, because I love breaking down the most popular spell book on the world stage and shedding a different light on the interpretation of what it means. So in the background, I have the band Twisted Sister there, right? Some fun for graphics. But I have done this now multiple times. So this is not just like, well, you've done it one time. Let's see you repeat it. Go check out my Central Intelligence Agency Decoded. Clearly it was in there and a few other ones spread out through my latest decodes. Probably the last 10 or 15 is going to be this methodology where you find the scripture in the Bible. In this case, the beast is Revelation 13 verses 18. And then you collect 
and add up the total amount of verses. So obviously it would stop at 13, chapter 13, verses 18, and then we would just go all the way back and we would find how many verses each chapter has for the remaining 12. And here they are all listed, right? And going over to the trusty calculator, adding up all 18 layers, and we get a total. This is like, this is theo theology and mathematics, folks. This is source code in theology. Okay, the code you're not gonna hear from the interpretation of any, any priest or rabbi or anything like that, okay? I can promise you that. You gotta do the work yourself. So there are 18 ways to look at this. You add them all up, 229. Is that anything significant in mathematics? Absolutely, it's the 50th prime number. So we're talking about the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. And it's 603 score and six. And I'm going to show you a variation because I was somebody who stood firm in the 666. And you know, the great, my, my great friend, Nigel, Nigel, much love, brother, wherever you're at in this world. He was like, no, nah, man, look at the 616 and a few other people that I'm like, no, nah, it's not. And then I had started to see and look. And now, now I'm retracing my steps and, you know, giving credit where credit is due. These people that were looking at the 616, I'm going to show you why. But the 666 is man, it's carbon. But why the 50? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's tied to alchemy through, and not just alchemy, but how about mainstream? 1939, the Wizard of Oz. One of the main characters who was played by Jack. Jack. His name was John, but he went by Jack. I've broken him down many times, right? What was the whole essence of the Tin Man? The Tin Man didn't have a heart. So it was looking for his heart. How does that line up with the beast? See, I believe spirit comes down here and becomes flesh, matter. Many stories in ancient texts talking about it through the mythologies, which are more fact than myth. Think about it. If you created this reality, wouldn't you come down here and play your own game? Of course you would. Any product you create on the world stage, you're going to use that product. Okay, you create a video game, you're going to play the video game. God creates this game, it comes down and plays the game, period. That's my final answer. And it's the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz looking for its heart. Here it is in alchemy. Tin. The 50th element. There it is. So the number of the beast is you. The soul below beast, you're looking for love. You're looking for your heart. You're looking for a hobby. You're looking for a business to grow. You're looking to establish yourself in this reality called life. You're looking to market your reality in this layer called life. You become the tin man or the tin woman. Okay. The, the, the great beast. Okay. That's the beast below. That would be you. And there's extended layers upon this. Now here's another layer to show you mankind is not in control of this reality. So we have a band Twisted Sister, who sang the song, The Beast. I wish I could talk to Dee Schneider and those guys, one day maybe, to talk about this song that they wrote. What do they really mean by that? I'm gonna show you some of the lyrics. But it's, we got a theology mainstream. Mainstream theology, mainstream. Now we have the medicine cards. These cards were created by a few Native American, Jamie Sams and company. Native Americans that decided to take animals insects and reptiles and convert those from the 52 cards on uh, the typical deck of playing cards and of course maybe there was some sprinkling of the tarot because the 15th card is the wolf and the and the devil is the devil card in the tarot but the 50th card in the deck of the medicine is the alligator which i've shown before right they're predators think about that the beast mankind is the great beast down here the alligator. And then you get into the reptilians. It goes way deep with this. I showed this in my, and they live decoded. Real, real deep in here. But the big humdinger, to give you this clue here, was this right here. Was the cards of illumination and then going into the tarot with the picture. Here's the 50th card in the cards of illumination. It's the jack of spades. It's got the letter J on it. Otherwise known as Jesus. Oh, you don't think Jesus is tied to the beast? Well, I, I, I'm going to support that. It's got that big fish hook on it, the J, and the Jack of Spades 
converts in the tarot to the 62nd card in the deck, 61 or 62, the Knight of Swords. This is a card of revolution, attacking, fierce attack. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, what this guy's got on. Body armor. Kind of what the Tin Man is wearing. <laughs> He's got body armor on. He's got an axe. He's got a sword. Do you think maybe Francis Baum that created the Wizard of... And, his, and you know, these tarot cards were created in 1901 by Arthur Rider Waite. Or 1902 or something around there. This was created like the Wizard of Oz, the whole story of that. Was he influenced by the tarot and vice versa? Do they know this? Because, you know, th this is not the 50th card in the deck. This is card 61 or 62, depending on how you look, whether the fool's t twice or not. These came out in the 13th, 14th century, according to the history I've read. <laughs> so there you go, folks. The Jack of Spades died to the Tin Man, and he's wearing armor, and he's wearing armor, which converts from the Jack of Spades to the Knight of Swords. This is tied to life is but a dream. Are we just in the dream of the cosmos? I, I, I say yes. It's not real. That's why I said this reality is not real. What do you mean it's not real? It's not real. But God's having a dream. It's real to us, but... But there's the great beast, folks. It becomes you and me. Mankind. Attacking. Arguing. Debating. You're wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. I'm right. Just trying to be right on everything you do. That's what we do as human beings. Trying to prove everybody wrong. So we can be right, so we don't have to look bad. We defend, 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 defend. This is all about going to wars, revolution, revolutionaries, et cetera, et cetera. So there's the big starting point for this decode, the beast below, okay? But let's now look at the beast above, right? So now I'm gonna get into the lyrics of the song, The Beast. So you see, Twisted Sister, whoever wrote this song, you could say, well, the band didn't write it. Okay, well, whoever wrote it, man, they'd have to be in cahoots with all theology and alchemy and the cards and tarot and all that. And they would have to actually sit down and figure this out to a T to get it exactly the way I'm decoding it. What I mean by that is when he first sings the song in the song, it's the nature of the beast. This is line number 12. I've shown this in many different songs now. Showing you we live in a scripted reality. Mankind is not in control of their mind something supernatural god whatever you want to call whatever you want to call it so it's line 12 and line 13 how many zodiac signs are there 12 but you see the big hidden thing is that there is actually 13 and this is going to be aluminium and i show this in my illumination decoded right here Okay, I first brought this out in my illumination decoded. Now I'm gonna be tightening it up a little bit with this decode. This is the freshest, most tightest material that I'm coming out with here. So we have the 12 zodiac signs with the 13 in the middle, the hidden one, which is gonna be tied to Jesus and the Christ right there. You bet your bottom dollar, that's what it leads to. A luminary body, that's what alum uh, aluminum means, okay? That's what it means. And it's the 13. That's why 13 is tied to death and it's tied to creation through magic. And then you go on to look at line 18. Jesus is 18. Christ is 18. I know the most beautiful story in the world that most people follow. There's no way that could be the predator. No way could it be that character. I'll, you gotta, I'm going to leave it up to you folks. I'm not going to convince. I'm here just to be the tour guide to show you you believe what you, whatever it is you want to believe. But nonetheless, there, there, there's the 18, and it's Revelation 13, verses 18. So 13 is, it's the nature of the beast. He is the predator. Okay? This is the as above beast. And mankind becomes the so below beast, like a puppet on strings. Okay? Like a puppet on strings. Even down here, uh, there's 33 total line items here. 33. Okay. Coincidence that the Christ was crucified at 33. That's story. 33 is arsenic. Arsenic is poisonous. Has an atomic mass of 74.92. Rounds up to 75. That's Jesus and Lucifer. Are they one and the same? Are they one and the same? So 13 and 18, Revelation 13 and 18 is 31. And if you watched my uh, Astro Alchemy Decoded, 
you'd, you'd know where these numbers fit. So 31 is going to be tied to the house of Leo. Okay. 31 is Leo. And Leo's alchemical element is boron. And the significance of this was so massive. I didn't catch this until I was creating this slide just a few hours ago. Boron has five protons and its isotope is 11. It's going to be 10.81 for the average, but that's going to round up to the 11. So I'm tightening this up with alchemy now. I'm going to single digits to tighten this up and you're going to see why I've done that. You're going to see why I've done that. So what is Leo ruled by? The sun. The sun is what rules the house of Leo. Leo is called the lion. He's even got it here in line item three. D. Schneider, but you can't hear the lion when he stalks his prey. The lion's here, okay? And it's right there. So what do you think the odds would be that the beast in Revelation 13 verses 18 is inside this song and it's, it's the nature of the beast. He is the predator and it's even got lion in there. And 31 is going to be tied to the house of Leo. What do you think the odds would be? When you know how to look for this kind of stuff, this is how deep you got to go to get this stuff really clarified for your mind. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So kind of to, to, to end the intro of this presentation, this album came out in 1984 on May 10th. May 10th. And the card that is associated to the day of May 10th is the nine of diamonds the nine of diamonds is may 10th i'm just referencing this chart right here the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination here's may you come down to may 10th and there's the nine of diamonds just so we can be really really crystal clear whoops uh where the hell am i there we go the nine of diamonds and that right here ladies and gentlemen this card that tied to this album that's a song the beast came off of is tied to the beast itself above and the 616. Now, I know this is a variation because, well, wait a minute, the beast is 666. Yes, that's the beast below. That's the number of a man. That's you and that's carbon. That's you and me and everybody. But the beast above is the zodiac wheel. And it's 616. And I'm going to support that and I'm going to show you how that is in a big way. 616. And of course, if you take 616 and you subtract 666, you're going to get the number 50. 50. You go back to the Tin Man and the Jack of Spades. 35. It's, it's, it's the, the, the beast above creates the simulation. And we're all part of that. And this Nine of Diamonds being the 35th card in the deck converts to the 73rd card in the deck. And you know what 73 is? You're on television. Okay, the great beast above creates the simulation in order for you to survive, exist, play, entertain the whole shebang down here. And you get to be this, this character right here. You get to be on television, having the fruits of your labor. Very successful outcome for a card, the nine. This is tied to the bishop, by the way. The bishop's on a chessboard, the nines. So there you go, the beast off of stay hungry. Stay hungry, feel the fire, stay hungry. Okay, this is all referencing playing the game right here. Playing the beast or, the, or the beast playing you. 616 and the 666. And that's going to give you that 50 in between. These are humdingers, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into the actual big breakdown of the beast through Leonardo da Vinci's 1495, 1498 painting of the Last Supper. You're like, wait, wait a minute. The, the Last Supper is the beast? Yuppers, it is. It most definitely is. I'm going to show you the hidden things in this that will blow your mind. Now, remember 616. Where are we getting that from? Well, we're going to start looking to the left side of your screen, to the right of the Jesus Christ superstar. And we have six apostles. And of course, on the opposite end, we have six the only thing now that we're missing is the one, and that would be Jesus, the Neo character. So we're Neo. One is an anagram of Neo. Of course, one equals 17 in numerology. That's the star card. So we have this right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the painting by Leonardo da Vinci 
showing you the great beast. This is the beast above right here at, at the 616. I'm going to show you to support that using theology and uh, some artifacts that were found as well, showing you how the people were being used that found it. Undeniable. But here it is, 616. Okay. Now let's do some math now to support this. To support this right here. 13 people at the table total. Jesus in the middle. So I'm going to take this 616. And I'm going to bring it into the string of the golden ratio like I have done so many times. We're bringing it into mathematics now. You can find the golden ratio is the, uh, the measurement. It's light. It's l light going into matter. And then you get into the string of the uh, 3.14 pi, which represents Earth. This is light. The golden ratio is nature, light, photosynthesis. And 616, you're, you're, gonna, you're looking at it right there, ladies. This is including the one point now. Look at what digit sits in the 880th digit. It's Jesus, the one. 880, and what's 880 when you take the zero off there? It's Ra. It's the sun god. So now you go from Christianity and Judaism, now you go back to ancient Egypt, which is where the Bible came from. It came from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. It's just a different story, the same story told in a different way. There you go. And this is why I've been continually saying, you're all Jesus because you're the one. This is you standing up. You have arms and legs. It's I. I am this. I'm going to go do that. I'm gonna, you're, you are the Christ, having the Christ experience. Your son, your spirit into matter. Even the great band Tool sang in their song, Numa. It says, we're the sun becoming. One spark. Okay? It's the sun becoming. This is the no-brainers now, folks. And if you take the 88 and you reduce it all the way down, it's going to be giving you the number 7. So let's look at it in an alternative way to show you how dialed in this code is, amazingly dialed in, and it becomes a seven, right? So radium reduces down to the 16, then it reduces down to the seven. So then it becomes six, seven, six, right? Well, where does that appear in the string of the golden ratio? The number seven that would represent Jesus and Ra, the sun, would, would be occupying digit 1,234. You ready for this, folks? You want to see how dialed in this is? What is the number 1,234? How about this? The number 10,061. 10061 is the 1,234th prime number. Bam! Just like that. Now you have the golden freaking ratio right there. By doing it an extra layer, reducing down that 88. I mean, if this wasn't the golden touch, if this wasn't like blowing your mind already, mathematics, alchemy, and a painting by Leonardo da Vinci, who was a great mathematician, if you study according to what, what I've read. Well, I mean, I don't know if he was doing it this, at this layers, but doesn't matter. His mind wasn't his own, I can tell you that. So you can become conscious of the code. Like I, you have, I have. But once you become conscious of it, you become more in tune with it. And then it just starts, you start to see things and it just get in, you get in tune with the frequency. That's it. And it starts to observe you back, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into now the 616 and what, what the hell these guys got to do with the Last Supper and the 616, right? What, what do those guys got to do with this? The great beast. What do these guys got to do? Well, you see, these two gentlemen here, Bernard Greenfell and Arthur Hunt, these guys right here, they discovered this uh, ancient text. I'm going to go here and let me see if I have it right here. These guys discovered, they called it Papyrus 115. Okay, they discovered it in this place in Egypt. Okay. Okay. And they date it back to the third century, okay, which was around the time when they wrote the Bible or were writing it, the New Testament. I have a time I'm going to be showing you that, okay, or a little bit before that, all right along that timeline. So this shit's old right here. 
And this manuscript that I, sh I was shown this years ago and I was like, no, no, I, I didn't want to accept it because I was, I was stuck in the 666 and I didn't really want to take a look at it. But of course, you know, at my, my way of looking at it now, having all these years of experience, you know, taking a fresh set of eyes, it was undeniable now that this has so much merit. And this right here <clears throat> is talking about the, the beast being 616. Here it is right here. Not 666. 616, but it means the beast above. And these are the two guys that discovered it, right? Grenfeld and Hunt, right here. Here is the, uh, here's the numerology of it in the Greek archaics, right? It's the 616, and it's going to give you the 13. 13 is pi and phi, 1.61, 3.14, okay? But look at the damn birthdays of these two. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? Grenfell was born on the 16th. Hunt was born on the first. What happens when you take 16 and one and you bring them together? Well, that's what happens. So just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have two guys who discovered this Papyrus 115 that says the beast is 616. And not only do they match the golden ratio, but they got the 616 in their freaking birthdays. I mean, seriously? I mean, is somebody docking this up to get it exactly like this? I mean, it's, they, these guys are not like that old. It's not like they were like, uh, they, like Arthur Hunt passed away in 1934. So it's not like he's like 200 years old and no one has any history on the guy. No one can, I'm sure somebody's still alive that met this dude. So not only do they have the damn golden ratio in their birthdays, but they have the 616 in the manuscript, the, the papyrus 115 that they found showing that the great beast was 616. How about that? Coincidence? I mean, you want to talk about a scripted reality? These guys were supposed to find this. Insane, mind-blowing stuff. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there is absolutely more. So how about their numerology? Showing you these guys didn't have a choice. This is, this is part of their screenplay. So... Grenfell has a 74 and Hunt has the 66. It's so crazy because of course, as you mostly been following along, what is tungsten? It's light, it's tied to the sun, tied to Jesus and the big W. And then of course, the latitude and longitude of Bethlehem, the city of Jesus is 31 and 35 and that's 66. Okay, so this we got the Christ in here, ladies and gentlemen, that beautiful story, religion. And when you do the alchemy of these, these guys is, uh, alchemology look at what you get it's a permutation of that 347 is the 69th prime number there's 88 and raw on the back end i mean are you freaking kidding me and this is what they discovered now you want to see the humdinger of all humdingers folks with these two guys right here i mean if you weren't already blown away then let's let's finish this part of it up i got so much more material too so here it is in Greek isopsophy, right? The, the full extension of these letters. If you study, you know, it goes from the single digits all the way to the triple digits, Greek isopsophy. This is gonna be 610 and six. So, you know, of course I wanted to spell it out to see if there was any clue there. And it was giving me a total of 63. And that's so interesting, right? Because these two guys is birth cards. Grenfell, the two of clubs, the 15th card in the deck, and then Hunt, the nine of spades, the 48th card in the deck. You add 15 and 48, what do you get? Frickin' 63. <laughs> Even the two and the nine, you bring it together, that's copper, and copper's got an atomic mass of 63. It's ridiculous, folks. But wait, there's more than that. How about their, uh, their death date cards? And this was the humdinger of them all for these. I mean, you want to talk about scripted reality? So he dies on the uh, 18th of June, the 27th card in the deck, the Ace of Diamonds. And then uh, Hunt dies on May 18th. And he's got the Queen of Clubs, the 25th. And when you add all four up, when you add them all up, 15 plus 48 plus 25 plus 27, you get 115. <laughs> Drum roll, please. What's the 115? Well, it's just the papyrus 115 that these guys discovered in Egypt, um, dated back to 225 to 275 AD. <laughs> so, you know, like, 
why the cards are so valuable why the cards are so valuable folks how many times i've shown this time and time again with bands coming together destined to come together these two guys did not have a choice they didn't have a choice in discovering this manuscript right they didn't have a choice folks and they they found it and their their death days or correlated around it they found it and then they die and they tack on these death cards and it adds up to one on one five which is the name of the papyrus one or five come on ladies and gentlemen let's use some critical thinking here what are the odds that this stuff exactly exists the way this is what are the odds that their birthdays are the golden ratio and a match to the single digits of the 616 right there in their birthdays I mean, is somebody like moshing the numbers here with these two guys? Are they doing this? Is this being done on, or is this a supercomputer that's running this reality and it's the digits and it's just pushing these digits like this? Are these people real? I mean, you know, like I 450 plus videos, man. Like, is everybody not real that I've been decoding? I mean, I've been decoding people that are still alive with these same kind of pattering outcomes. Insane, ladies and gentlemen. These guys were destined to find this papyrus 115. No doubt about it. Clearly you can say, and there's more layers. I could have went into more stuff, but let's keep going because I got more material and I want to get this material out. Uh, and uh, it, it's, this is so, so much fun. But anyway, here, here's the 616 beast, ladies and gentlemen. This is how it looks astrologically. Now there's several ways you can do it, man. You know, you can do it different ways, but of course there are six houses on the bottom. There's one in the middle, which is the sun and the moon, celestial. And then you get the six on top. Six, one, six. See that? So six on the bottom, six on the top, and then you have the one in the middle. Six, one, six. Okay? The celestial in the middle. It's aluminum in the middle. And, you know, when you... Um, when you add up six plus one plus six, you get 13 and you're going to get the death card. And that's why the death card represents spirit dying to come down to play the game, to become an avatar, to become one of us. And it can run you any way it wants. That's why the voice in your head owns you. The voice in your head, where do the thoughts come from? You're not in control of those thoughts. They're just going to continually pop up in your head. And here's the 13th card in the deck. It's the king of hearts. The king, this is the card, the king of unconditional love, which is going to give you the number 73. You're on television. Unconditional love. Everything goes down here. That's why judging and blaming and criticizing, you're criticizing the creator. That's what you're doing. You're blaming the creator. It's maybe not directly, but you are. Because the creator is unconditional love. It has to be. The next time you see a praying mantis chewing on another praying mantis's head, you ask yourself, is that love? Next time you see a ladybug chewing on some aphids, ask yourself is that, if that's conditional love or unconditional love. When you see a grizzly, a grizzly bear chewing on a salmon, well, alive that it caught in the creek, is that conditional love or unconditional love? Ask yourself these questions. Study nature, folks. So this is the 13th element, aluminium, tied to the Christ, sitting in the very dead center, right? Where you get the 12 apostles around that right there. This is what this looks like, ladies and gentlemen. And when you correlate it to you as a human being, it sits in the very middle of your eye. This is why I had said, be the best little devil you can be for fun. Because the black sun is right there in your eye. You got two of them. And it's right there. And, you know, of course, aluminium's uh, isotope is 26.98. It's going to be isotope 27, 26 and 27. That's why these numbers always encroach. You become the student. Pupil means student. You're being, you're giving feedback to this reality. You're not in control of it. You're designed to be harvested for energy, folks. It's not a bad thing when you can look at it from a different perspective. Instead of thinking you're in prison. Which essentially, if you really want to break it down, you kind of are. You, you're, you're here till you die. And we don't even know what happens after that. 
But this is kind of what it looks like. I, I have come out with this several times. Astrology is your eyeball. Now you have two of them. Yes. So you're going to have the chart of when you were born that will overlay onto your eye. And then the chart of the now moment, which constantly moves, is going to be in your other eye. And that's tied to everybody constantly creating the past, present, and future simultaneously. Okay. So that's what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. So now let's get into the astro alchemy. Right. And I've already covered this, but I'm going to show folks this. You ready? I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. I already, I already leaked this to the Patreons, but I hope you're ready, folks, because this one is uh, like, I don't know how, how else you do look at this and describe what I'm about to show you. So what you got to do here to get a very deeper layer of astrology and the beast above the 616, you got to get the alchemy in line here. And you realize that each zodiac sign is tied to an element on the periodic table. So if you got your sun somewhere, right, you're going to be, you're all 12 signs, by the way. If somebody asks you, like, what, what's your sign? Your answer should be, I'm all 12, because you, you have all 12 houses in your astrological chart. But of course, most people, well, my sun's here, my moon's there. That's fine, but you got placements everywhere. But anyways, these are the elements that are connected to each of the zodiac signs. Okay. And when you add these up, the um, isotopes, using the trusty calculator, this is what you're going to get. 160. This represents the 12 apostles. Okay? The 12 apostles that support the middle piece, which would be the indication of the Christ, the light. Okay? The 160. And so where is the 160 going back into mathematics? I'm going to reference the Last Supper again here. And I squared it out. Look at where the 160 is, ladies and gentlemen. Look how tightly woven this code is. Remembering 616 is going to be tied to Ra and the Christ and the six apostles on the left, six apostles on the right. But you go 616 and then there's the zero. There's the 160. So the one starts off with the Christ, which means that the 12 apostles are directly being influenced and tied to the centerpiece, which is aluminum, a luminary body. It's right there. You can't miss it. One, six, zero. Even ladies and gentlemen, which I showed already before, you see that 1600? What's the address of the White House in Washington, D.C.? It's 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. What's the address of the corporate headquarters for the largest artificial intelligence gatherer called Google? How about 1600 Amphitheater Way, Amphitheater Parkway? Oh, yeah, they're tied to Ra because radium's half-life is 1600. So Ra, the sun god, is tied to the beast above, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the way it is. Tied to the 12 apostles, tied to your eyeball, and that's the way it is. Now, we have to add in the center point, which in the Last Supper is Jesus. The light, a luminary body, the sun, the moon, right here. The word heaven is 27. Okay? And when we add it up, you get 187 for the total. 160 plus 27, 187. You ready for the humdinger of them all? How about this? Right here. How about when you take the 12 names of each apostle and then add Jesus in there? Look at the total, what you get. 319. And then I plug that into the golden ratio again and look at where it's found. Bam! Now, you mean to tell me, ladies and gentlemen. So, and this is only Chaldean now. Go ahead and try to use it with any of this. Like this reverse, ridiculous reverse. and all. You're not going to get these outcomes. You won't. Okay? So, I want to put on the critical thinking now. 319 is the outcome for all 13 individuals sitting at this table. And then the 319 in the string of the golden ratio appears at digit 187. This doesn't include the one point. It's going to push it to 188, but it's going to go back to the 13. So it's not going to matter, folks. There's always these numbers encroach upon each other. 
So you mean to tell me that the total alchemology of, or astro alchemy of each astrological sign with alchemy, with the Christ in the middle, the number in the middle is 187. And that's a match through the golden ratio of the numerology of all 13 people sitting at this table. Now, let's start to use some critical thinking. So I'm going to produce some timelines here. I got a lot going on. So do your best. I'm going to do my best to narrate this for you. All right. So I, this is the timeline of the New Testament when it was delivered. Over here to the far right is when the Last Supper was completed by Leonardo da Vinci, 1495 to 1498. So how far forward this is. Now, again, I want, how did I get, how do you get this? How do you get English? Because you, you can go into the Greek as well. I didn't even do the Greek of where this originally came from. How do I get English? Okay. How did I get English? When, of course, this guy's d d designing it probably, and then you got Latin and all that kind of stuff. How do you get it just exactly the way this looks? When the Last Supper was painted in 1495, okay. You go all the way back to supposedly when the New Testament and the books were decided upon in 367 AD, the third council, right? And it's Athanasius, okay? That's the guy who basically decided upon the canons. This is just what I'm reading from the histories now, ladies and gentlemen. Look at how ridiculous this is. 367 AD is when the books were decided upon. That's the 73rd prime number. Remember, 73 is right here, ladies and gentlemen, that you're on television, right? I had to go way the hell back up. Damn, right there. You're on television, 616. Coincidence? That the New Testament, the books, the 27 books get decided upon and it's tied to the great beast. Coincidence, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be the, the decider on that. Right there, it's right there. You're on television, 73, tied to that nine of, nine of diamonds. Okay, so look at this. There's 27 books in the New Testament. Of course, religion equals 27. Sports equals 27. Currency equals 27. The 13th element has an isotope of number 27, which is tied to the Christ. Religion is re-legion. It means to do it again and again and to do it again and to do it again. History repeats itself. Okay, here's the guy who, dis who decided upon the canons. Athanasius. The first, he's 31, tied to Christianity, which is 31. Bethlehem, the birth city of the Christ, is 31 degrees north. And aluminium, the element that represents the Christ, is 31. Christianity, 31. I mean, folks, come on, where do we draw the line here? This is a scripted reality. All these players have to be involved in it, including alchemy. The people that named these elements, who discovered these elements. No way, not, not on my watch. It just doesn't make any sense. And the Last Supper, all the way here, a thousand years into the into the future this this painting gets done and remember ladies and gentlemen these elements the only element that was known to mankind way back here was carbon carbon if, if you go look at carbon right here carbon does not have a uh discovery date it says it's prehistoric okay Six plus 12 is 18. Jesus is 18. Christ is 18. Okay. This, that's the only one. All the other elements, they were discovered in the 17, 1800s. Three, 400 years past when the Last Supper was completed. The first element, the closest element to 1495 is nitrogen. That's the closest one. 1772 is when it was discovered by Daniel Rutherford. Here he is right here, who discovered nitrogen, 1772. Look at the number of what it is, 714. You know what those numbers are tied to? Lucifer. Oh, yeah. Nitrogen is 79% of the air that we breathe. It's the number seven. It's tied to Libra, which is the fall of man. It's a Venus energy. And so I decided to subtract the two, right? The oldest element discovered in the 12 is nitrogen. 
1772 and I subtracted the last supper completion date 1495 it gave me 277 that's the 59th prime number and look at what we got here folks I mean I could have kept going with this the game of life is 59 59 is the 17th prime number the the word one equals 17 Jesus becomes the one in the middle you become the one in the middle you're, you're all of these folks this guy was being used to discover this because they would have to be all in on the conspiracy to get all this stuff the way it is it's either that or some there is some a quantum supercomputer that is running this entire world and we live inside of a computer which is a very good possibility because the way these outcomes are and the way i see decoders well then they tack on this truth and i and then i see this they tack on all every time a decoder tacks on a layer of what they see it makes it more of an impossibility that mankind could ever code it every single possibility that gets tacked on to a decode it becomes more and more impossible it would be the other way around if you would eliminate some of them but nope, all these decoders, I'm just showing this, I'm showing that, this number leads to this, and this, everything's all connected. We live in a scripted reality, folks. History repeats itself. And this is the beast above, ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing astrology and alchemy, astro alchemy here, okay? And theology, the celestials. I showed you the, the 616 and the two guys being used that discovered the Papias 115. It's just ridiculous. So getting to the tail end of this beast now, ladies and gentlemen. So this obviously is a big outcome, this 187. And in my illumination decoded, I had this pegged to the 76 element, which is called osmium, the wizard of Oz. And uh, rhenium is a, is a decay of osmium. 76 decays down into rhenium. But the big humdinger for this is is rhenium 186.955 this is going to round up to isotope 187 that's why i've gone to all single digits here you're going to start to see me do doing this more and more now because i'm fine-tuning this research well ladies and gentlemen what's the speed of light 186,000 miles per second okay 75 is tied to the words history repeats itself i'm just going to show you really really on the fly here History repeats itself, 75. Well, how does it repeat itself? From the beast, okay, the beast, it's a predator. And you're the prey, I'm the prey, okay? Your mind's not your own. To be the, be the best little devil you could be. Either service to self or service to others. What is it, what is it gonna be? Who, what are you serving? Is there a way to kind of get out of the voice in your head well i mean start to study your code and be non-reactive to when your code wants you to react talked about this quite a bit with um with ola and um self mastery request let's talk about exiting the matrix part one and part two but this right here is a big one so i'm going to follow this trail i follow this trail history repeats itself tied to the beast so rhenium rhenium is tied to lucifer Oh, yeah, it is, because here is Lucifer's full numerology in Hebrew. It's a 75. And Lucifer is known as the light bringer. So you have Lucifer, the light bringer, Jesus, the light of the world. Are they, are they any different? The, is, is Jesus anything different than Lucifer? That's the question. Why is Jesus got a twin brother named Thomas? And they cast Thomas John Ellis to play Lucifer. Is there any difference? Well, we go 187 into the string of the golden ratio to measure it again. And look at what the 187 measures through. Digit 1469 through 1471. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what that 147 is? Well, it's not only is it tied to nitrogen here, which is tied to Libra, which is where the fall of man is. There's the 714. I showed you how this was tied to the beast. It's, it's right here again with the numbers. And then I decided to pull up the isotope. This is right off of, uh, you know, the internet here, trying to get this a little fine-tuned. Here are the main isotope, the isotope serenium. I'm always looking at the numbers, looking for clues, and there was a big one right there, squared and in red. Isotope 185. Look at the abundance of it. Look what the number is. 37.4%. Right there is the 
You see what I'm saying, folks? Like you got to look at everything. And then you would start to contemplate whether or not whoever wrote this, did they have, do they have, do they have this knowledge and they made sure that they're, they're really doing this, they're punching this into the computer to get this exactly the way it is? You, you're you're going to have to answer that question, not not me. I, I'm not going to answer that for you. But, I mean, there it is. There's Here's Moe's website, GnosticWarrior.com. Once again, you know, Lucifer's represent. This is Manly P. Hall now. Now, I'm not saying Manly P. Hall is the authoritative voice on Lucifer. But, you know, the 741, again, I mean, what does it look like? Well, it's it's tied to Renium. I mean, Renium is 28. Lucifer is 28. 75 is the proton. 75 is the original Hebrew spelling for Lucifer. And there's the 741 and the digits, which is tied to nitrogen in Libra. Libra, which is a Venus energy. Venus runs this house. That's why you have some reference to Lucifer being Venus. There's the 714 right in the uh, protons in the isotope of nitrogen. Nitrogen being 79% of the air we breathe, along with oxygen. Okay? These are all... Like, folks, you got to start looking at this. these layers. This is how deep it goes. This is how deep it goes. So to finish this decode off, I decided to look at, uh, and I'm glad I did, is, you know, where does uranium come from? Well, it's tied to the Rhine River in Germany, in Europe. Here it is. Here's the river, the Rhine River right here. If you just follow my cursor, go. it's like 1,230 miles long or 1,231 miles long right here. Okay. What does that look like to you? Well, look here to your right, and then you make a decision. What do you think the Rhine River looks like? What does that look like to you? I instantly recognize the dragon, folks. Now, Lucifer is known as the great dragon that got hurled down, which is light. Michael fought the dragon. Light. Does, I mean, am I stretching anything at all that this looks like a dragon? And this is the Rhine River, and this is where this element is kind of named after when you study Rhenium and the Rhine. I don't know, you're going to be the determination. I thought this was just like for fun, but I mean, look at what I'm talking about here. Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer. Lucifer, tied to the G-O-D, tied to this G-O-D. I mean, does that not look like a dragon to you? And it's tied to this element? Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for this presentation. What did you see? It's kind of a new little fun uh, exit for Decoder Reality. Uh, just trying to make it more fun for all you... Um, great researchers out there, syncretists, historians, whatever it is that you fancy. But we'd love to hear what you saw for this beast decoded. I could have added so much more into this, but clearly now you know there is the 616 beast tied to the astrological placement and the 666 beast below would be us as human beings. And then you get that number 50. And how big is that 50? 50 Bitcoin got mined, you know, like why 50? You know, like you start looking at this 50, you're going to start to see it all over the place. In God, we trust equals 50. What they put on the back of a dollar bill. Why the 50? Cincuenta in Spanish. Cincuenta is 33 in Spanish. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan for Decoder Reality. Until next time, we will see you later.